We want a ton of new things in Hogwarts Legacy sequel. London, Ministry of Magic, Diagon Alley, Morality System, gazillions of new spells, but what about the less essential quality of life improvements and minor fixes from the original game that too should happen in the next game that will improve our experience? Recently, I asked you to submit your wish list, and now, combined with my own suggestions, in this video we're going to talk about 17 must-have fixes in Hogwarts Legacy 2. Okay, so the first one is a bit random, but I really want to address this. What cat does normally sound like that? It sounds like he wants to either f or is about to throw up. This how cats normally sound like so please let's let's fix that also how about having a bigger variety of pets hanging out around the castle i know that dogs aren't technically allowed to be pets but pugs are canon so i would love to see them <laughs> in the next game maybe in some hamlets or london one thing that bothers me to this day is everyone's resting bitch face at the end of each shot when a person is done talking and before cutting to the next one the character resets to the idle facial expression resulting in well the resting bitch face like it literally undermines everything that was said previously by the character like oh my god i'm so sorry about your problem of course that will help you like hell i would you stupid even though it happens fast, this moment always breaks the fourth wall. Another thing that desperately needs fixing is the absence of sitting in the game. I want to sit in the Great Hall, I want to sit on those sofas around the common rooms, on those cold ass benches outside the castle, everywhere. And I don't need to spend any more time on this bit. Just make that tweet a few years from now with just the word sit and millions will be happy from that. Moving on. Also, oh, I will just throw in sleeping in beds as well. What I love about Hogwarts Legacy is how cinematic it is everywhere you look, especially without the HUD. I've spent hours walking around the corridors or just standing in one spot and taking in the view, pretending I'm in the movies. But I really hate going back and forth, uh, switching on and off the, you know, the HUD. And I feel like a lot of players never really knew that there is an option for that. So I think what the developers can do in the sequel is similar to the way the HUD is handled in games like God of War, Elden Ring, and even Call of Duty. Have the HUD completely disappear whenever you're not in combat and or have your wand sheathed. Because you don't really need to have it always on. This will allow players to experience those amazing details in a full cinematic view without any distractions. But with that, I think we will have to get rid of the minimap. And it is a bit controversial, like I do love seeing the minimap, there are great visuals there. But at the same time, by removing it, we will allow for a more immersive exploration. Like whatever you see in front of you, that's, that's it. Like if you see there is a turn over there, you have to explore if there is anything there. Speaking of discovery, Hogwarts Legacy could take it a step further by not revealing almost every single thing on the minimap. Even the field guide pages, like we can hear them. You know, like that magical sound you hear when near a field guide page and the ghost appearing. That's awesome. And let it be just that. I know that you can technically turn those things on and off, but I still think that's unnecessary. Like, we have Revelio for that, which can be used just optionally, and you can still keep the Felix Felicis mechanic available. Bottom line is, spoiler-free exploration is key for the immersion. Hogwarts Legacy did an outstanding job at creating highly detailed and unique common rooms of each house, but the problem is, I found myself rarely visiting them. Like, there's no missions in the common rooms, except the house tokens and the Hufflepuff mission where you have to talk to the, uh, to the portraits and then you eventually go to Azkaban. In fact, up until like my second playthrough, I didn't notice that every common room has these gorgeous, beautiful Christmas decorations. 
I really wish we're gonna have more side and main missions that will have us spend more time in the common rooms. And I think the suggestion that I had in a previous video could work perfectly with the addition of the house tournament in spite of the 900th anniversary of Hogwarts, of Foundry of Hogwarts, where students will participate in unique tasks that will require deep research of corresponding founders history. Maybe as part of one of the tasks, we'll have to like search for some hidden areas in the common room area and find some artifacts that will tie into this main story somehow. But besides having main missions, I'd love to just like chill out in the common room. I don't know, play chess or talk to the ghosts during a thunderstorm. Just like hang out basically in the common room, sleep in the bed. I already mentioned that, but like Maybe some of that sim life that we have in Room of Requirement can be brought in to the common rooms partially, like have a chest or a wardrobe that we, you know, we access there. And also I would love to just see students hang out there and be in beds during the night. <laughs> because where, where do they go? Every, everybody's just gone. Maybe we are dead and we're the ghost. <laughs> So you guys remember the uh, my reaction video to the state of play of Hogwarts Legacy where I absolutely lost my shit. Um, so when I saw the moment with the portrait, I got 100% reassured that we're going to have lots of these secret passageways, different other portraits doing similar stuff with secrets. But no, no, it's just that only one that does that. I mean, to be fair, we do have plenty, I feel like we have plenty of secret uh, areas, like the pulsar rooms, we have one-eyed statue passageway, and we have other like secret areas here and there, but I think we can quadruple that amount by a ton, one, and actually have the secret passageways like we see in the Order of the Phoenix. I don't know if that would be really necessary or would make sense, but I would still love to see that in the next game. Let me know what do you think about this, guys. So remember the ASMR video that was posted a while back called A Rainy Spring Night? And the very last shot of which was near the Magic Neep during a thunderstorm with lightning striking very vividly and thunder rumbling so, so nicely. Where is it now? There is no thunderstorms in the game, except in the area with, with the grab horns. Besides just bringing thunderstorms in the sequel, how about we have the weather affecting our gameplay? Like, for example, blizzards, fog, and regular thunderstorms will be affecting our visibility, so we'll, have, we'll not be seeing a lot. Oh, guys, maybe... That would be so cool. So for example, because we find ourselves flying so much during the game and that changes our way of exploration, but then sometimes there will be this blizzard or thunderstorm that will push us to walk. Like flying will be just, will not see stuff around us. We'll just literally be blinded and beasts will be like, fuck that, I'm not flying for this, right? So we'll have to walk during bad weather. I think that would be a really great thing to do, like where, weather just pushes us towards certain actions and the way we interact with it. And another thing, just quickly, I want to hear that weather. If it's a thunderstorm, let it reflect on the inside of the castle because those shots with thunderstorm and Harry and Ron being in the common room and then seeing lightning flashes and hearing the thunder. Oh my fucking God. That is just like so, so cool. That would be awesome to have that in the sequel. The lighting and visuals are incredible in Hogwarts Legacy, but this next thing always felt off-putting during dialogues. It's a bit hard to notice, but whenever the camera cuts to another character, there is this odd flicker of the light that's very distracting. Every first couple of frames after the cut, the lighting goes either too bright or too dark and then resets to normal, resulting in this very jittery and annoying experience. And I really don't have anything else added to it besides the fact, like, it's still there. It's crazy that it was never addressed by anyone. Maybe, it, is it just me? <laughs> is this only happening with my game or only my brain, my eyes see that? But like, it's there all the time. 
Since Hogwarts Legacy sold 22 million copies, it is safe to say that at least 22 million people have noticed this. It was wonderful. I believe I'm really going to enjoy this class. The robotic sounding voice of the MC whenever changing its pitch sounds incredibly off-putting, and I would love for that to be fixed in the next game. Additionally, I love the suggestion from one of you guys to add some regional accents to choose from. Like, of course, we're not going to be able to have all accents uh, in the world. That's pretty much impossible. But like, for example, having Scottish or Irish or Welsh accents, maybe having some regular RP and really posh sounding accents to choose from. Like, I think that would be really cool. Obviously, one of the biggest things that needs fixing is the absence of the companion system. This feature was heavily teased and advertised in their state of play and got cut out of the game. And there's a ton of evidence left in the code of the game of that system, including unique dialogues for all the different characters that would comment on things you do in the world. And it would be so amazing if we had this system. We could be doing missions together. There would be more opportunities for some character development. Maybe we could also access our companions' inventory and like change their clothes or give them stuff to carry if it's too much for us to carry, if there's even that mechanic there. Also, maybe our friendships will be building and maybe some companions will be not ready to come with you. You'll have to like first talk to them or help them out in something, do their homework, brew them a potion or something like, okay, I'll come, I'll come try to kill a troll with you. <laughs> And actually, this feature has a high chance of coming not only into the sequel, but into the definitive edition of Hogwarts Legacy, which actually I think is going to be a great thing to test out this feature and see if people actually like this or if it makes sense to be bringing it into the sequel. But we'll talk about definitive edition later on. For now, let's move on. Some of you have expressed a desire to have a more immersive school life with NPCs and us attending classes, eating meals during breaks, having them present in the school at night, as well as having the house point system. While not everyone would like to be attending classes all the time, but I feel like this could come as an optional thing, and like that's where house point system will work perfectly. Like for example, if you are constantly missing classes while busy doing all the open world stuff, then your house won't be getting as many points. So basically, make this mechanic as a little reward to those who want to have just a mundane school life at Hogwarts. Not playing chess is another crime against the Earth um, in Hogwarts Legacy, but only because I love doing that in Order of the Phoenix. And but it's it was honestly mostly because of the ambience of whatever room I was sitting in, his library, common room, whatever. Like, come on, the chess pieces are already animated. Just get the app from the, from my phone of the chess and just put it in. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's not it, it's more complicated than that. But like, come on, let's make it happen. So this one is a bit controversial, but I think not brewing potions as in not following exact recipes of potions and combining different ingredients uh, is something that should be fixed in the next game. While I do like the convenience of doing it super fast, at the same time, I kind of want it to be like in the Half-Blood Prince video game. But I can see people getting super annoyed with constantly doing it because it was really hard in that game. But uh, maybe if we can upgrade our potions and charm skills, then maybe we could do it as fast as we do it in current game, right? But also, I want to have the ability to experiment with different potions and combine ingredients from a much higher list of ingredients that we have in the current game, as well as potions, and brew nonsense potions. Like, you know, like in Zelda, uh, you can cook dubious food. Same thing here. Maybe some of them will be deadly, we'll brew it and it explodes immediately, right? And we're dead like, okay, well, we'll not brew that potion ever again. Or maybe we'll have that potion brew automatically in certain place and serve as a, like, as a mine. Because remember the cauldrons also that were exploding in the Goblet of Fire? Oh my god! Like, that could be a potion that does that. So much potential. Oh, I'm, I'm just getting excited. I can talk for hours about this stuff, guys, by the way. <laughs> for hours. So bringing a high-paced, immersive and challenging game of Quidditch 
into an RPG game is a very difficult thing to do. With that, I still think that we're not going to get a playable Quidditch uh, in the sequel. But, but, we still can get Quidditch in the next school year, but we will only attend the matches there. Like, we will not participate. Maybe as part of the story, we will do the tryouts, we'll start training for it, maybe we'll play like a practice Quidditch or whatnot. But then we'll receive like an injury that will disqualify us from joining our house's team. This way, like, it will allow us to experience this game from a slightly different perspective. Maybe we'll do some kind of investigation during the match, but we'll not play it. I mean, of course, we can have a, a gimmick Quidditch, like in first Harry Potter games. But, like, the point is, I don't want the developers to spend huge chunk of their time and budget just to bring this feature that I guarantee you, you're going to play, like, two or three times tops throughout your entire playthrough. So, besides, we now can have the fullest Quidditch experience in Quidditch Champions. So this one is more of a wish list and is kind of tricky because I really think that Hogwarts Legacy has a good open world, but increasing interactivity and uniqueness in the open world would be a great thing to see in the sequel. Like, we are wizards, we have so many different spells. Give us the freedom to dive deep into our creativity. Like, I don't know, chop some trees and then put them together with incarcerators to make a raft. Or build a house with just rocks. Or, I don't know, maybe we want to destroy someone's chimney or repair their patio and water their withered flowers. And Or maybe we want to go across the lake and we still don't have the broom or we're just broke to get one. Like freeze portions of the lake to walk across. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom did this amazingly with their crafting mechanic, and I think it can be partially implemented here as well. Just like let people be creative with their magic and let it be unique. London, for example, could provide a different a variety of options to interact with than from an uh, area around Hogwarts, like, I don't know, make train cars fly or put a charm on the train tracks and have them protect us. You know, the best thing about the Wizarding World is that it taps into this very creative and imaginative realm of possibilities, like, what can we do with our wands? So creating that immersive playground that players will keep coming back to because there's this plethora of immersion and pos endless possibilities will be one of the keys to sequel's success. I really think so. All right, someone sent this one and it's absolutely hilarious. So add the oh my god, shut up option. So many times where we have Ignatia Will Smith saying something or one of the poachers throwing you some smart ass line and you want to just say like, shush. It would be so awesome we'd have this wheel of comeback lines to throw at them. But I mean, it's not super necessary, but it still would be cool to see. But of course, there's so many more different fixes that we can have in the sequel. And guys, you go nuts in the comment section about what would you fix in the next game. And if you want to continue this discussion about the sequel, hop in into the next video. But guys, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe button and all the other buttons of that nature. Thank you for watching and butter beers on me. See you next time.